Twenty Nine Palms, like that area, the Joshua Tree. It's very art, uh, artistic community. What is it about the death oh. that creates this this artic, uh, artistic uh, community and network? Well, I would say that when I went there, a lot of it was the affordability. You know, because I came from San Francisco, and the reason I moved out of San Francisco is because the dot com thing happened, and you know, prices went up, and and the last uh, apartment I lived in got sold. It was a unit, four units, you know, four flats, and they all got sold to be turned into condos. And I was like, well, I didn't move to the Bay Area in 1977 in order to move out to Vallejo or somewhere, you know, where I could afford to live again. So the um, person I knew um, and was my boyfriend at the time said, well, let's move out to the desert. It's always been my dream. And I hadn't even really been down there. I'm just one of those people, though, I'm like, well, you know, look up things and, you know, I, I can find my way in this new environment. And of course, we went down there for a couple of, you know, initial visits and thought it was gorgeous. And I knew I'd be able to find places to swim. So, yeah. Well, that's very nice. Did, did you run into Josh Homie there? Is that because uh, I know he did a cover of Never Say Never. I don't know. if. I did. Yes, I did run into him once. It was so exciting. In fact, I was just recalling it the other day. Um, so it wasn't too long after that came out. And a girlfriend of his had contacted me, probably I was on Facebook at that time, and said, um, you know, I'll send you the little CD single if you want. You know, just give me your address. She lived down in Palm Desert. And, of course, um, uh, 29 Palms is the high desert. And, Palm Desert, the low desert. So I said, oh, thank you, you know, and she sent it to me. And um, so anyway, one morning I was going into this uh, restaurant from the back door because there was a parking lot back there, but you could also go in the front door. And as I was going in the back door, I could see him starting to leave through the front door. He's an unmistakable person. You know, he stands, Very what, tall. six, four or five? He's really tall and he's got red hair and he's, you know, kind of Viking build, you know. And I was like, that's him. I know it. And so I went, you know, running through the restaurant trying to dodge all these people to get to the front of the restaurant. And when I got out front, he was just hanging around talking to some people. So I like, hello. And he's like, oh, I know who you are. And I was like, yeah, you covered my song. And we had a little moment. It was all smiles and friendly and so then I'm like, well, thanks for you know covering my song with a kazoo. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty ludicrous and hilarious, but I like ludicrous and hilarious. You know, giddiness is next to godliness. <laughs> and so um, that's not my line. It's Tom Robbins. I don't know if you ever read Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a line in that book. And I've just remembered it ever since because it's kind of something to live by. Uh -huh. And um, so anyway, so I I was just going to have my 50th birthday party and I invited him. It was like the next day or two days or something. He's like, yeah, well, we're recording, so we probably won't come by. But, you know, thanks for the invite. So that was my meeting. I, oh, I asked for a hug and he gave me a hug and that was nice. <laughs> 